You know what I find most annoying on YouTube? Is when people say, let's stop talking and I'm gonna stop talking so that we can get right to the subject and get to the point. One of the things I most am annoyed by. And also, before we get into the topic, I'm going to talk. I made a couple books, a few of them. They're called Friendship Journals. Uh, there's gonna be a link in the description below. Um, there's just like a whole bunch of different questions, um, four different sections. Uh, there's like a trivia, and then there's also questions about to get to know each other. There's like a little activity section, and then at the end there's questions that are very particular between you and a friend, and yeah, you write down stuff. And also there is photography by yours truly. It's a butterfly. So if you would like to um, help strengthen your relationships, um, this is just a fun way to be able to um, ask certain questions that you may not think right away to ask. You can even just even take this to a coffee shop and read it. Um, if you know someone who think that'd be an awesome gift, well, they are available on Amazon, just like everything else. So we are going to do the loop section of uh, ENFJ, and I'm going to be doing a whole thing about all the loops. I did a little dive into it, and I'd like to share some insights. First thing is that all of these are a bit subjective to try to figure out, and I am not an ENFJ, so I cannot speak to this directly. I can just kind of only read and study the best I can. So ENFJ is out there. Um, please give us your insights. Give us some practical examples. I know some ENFJs, and so I'm going to be drawing from some of what I've seen in their lives. And um, and so I would like to just open up this forum just to be able to understand each other better. And so ENFJs, please, you are the master at this. I am not, and hopefully I'm just an op a facilitator for a good conversation. So with ENFJs, we're gonna be going into the functional stacks with each of these pro uh, personality types. Um, theirs are FE is their primary. Um, which is extroverted feeling, and then it is introverted uh, intuition, and then extroverted sensing, and then introverted um, thinking as their last function. And so when the ENFJ is in their prime, they are going to be exercising the first two um, functions, um, the FE and the NI, as they're experiencing um, the world through their FE, their NI helps um, like boil down their experiences very over quick overview of that. Um, and then when they're starting to go into pressure, they shift into their um, into their loop and which is not a bad thing at first. It just kind of helps give a new perspective and they're just kind of in pressure mode and that's for all, you know, all the different types. But then what can happen is that we can get stuck in these loops. And so I just want to describe what the loop looks like um, and some things to help through it. Um, and so, what ENFG, ENFGs, they're Gs now, ENFJs, when they're getting stuck in their loop, a lot of things start to happen. They start to go outward a lot. They're more obsessed with the outward, outward world around them. So, um, them specifically is like their relationships, um, their image around um, what people, what they look like around other people, because um, they're, they are losing their stability in who they are, what they believe in. And so they are now turning to other people. They're also turning to materialism. So like if they start to get things, uh, that's a way for them to feel like they're accomplished um, or validated. And so all of their validation is starting to be poured into the people around them. And they kind of go more and more outward. And instead of being, you know, trusting themselves of what they know is right and their morality and what they know, they start... Um, kind of slaving themselves to the expectations and wants for other people. It's a way for them to feel secure, feel safe about what's happening because they're no longer trusting themselves. Um, they can become very manipulative um, because they're trying to save the relationships around them um, because that also is a way for them to, at that moment, feel very secure, uh, validated and, and whatnot, and also getting a clearer sense of direction. But it's on the you know, backs of the expectations of other people. And this can happen for a variety of reasons. Um, a real simple one can be just some turbulence in a romantic relationship. If the guy or girl um, seems distant or uncertain and they can sense that, um, they can get really anxious about the pursuit of that relationship and, and they're going to be saying things that they wouldn't normally say 
in hopes that they're that that their partner is going to uh, want to be in a relationship that is more long committed with them, especially if they are far more invested. And so whenever there's a situation that makes them completely disrupted in their, um, especially relational environment, they start losing sight in their own abilities, which they're actually very capable people. They specifically are very um, intuitive, um, thoughtful, goal-driven, but also very empathetic. And so they're very capable people um, just being able to read the room and, and know the social situations. So one of the things is that we just kind of say, oh, you just need to stimulate your auxiliary function, which is your second function, which is part of the, like, part of the healing process, but there has to be an addressing to what's causing the loop, what keeps pushing you into this space. And so if there is some kind of social pressure that's happening or um, a huge amount of change, um, you know, what is causing, that's something you have to self-reflect on yourself to know and figure out and then be able to address it. Um, and a lot of things I think are rather ubiquitous. It's like, is there forgiveness that needs to happen? Uh, do you need to confront something? Do you need to make a hard choice about something that's really stressing you out? Do you need to manage your relationships um, in a very particular way? Um, what is that thing? Alongside that, what you can do is also be stimulating your introverted um, intuition. Um, and so what that kind of means is also just, it's just pulling away. And what you need to do is gain clarity um, realign yourself about like what you know is true and what you believe in and what you value and uh, just having that reflection even though you'll be really guilty at uh, at doing that because you're pulling away from people and you feel like people are expecting things from you and because you're kind of people pleasing everyone around you ENFJ and so um, but it's good just to have that time because that's something you desperately need uh, just to be able to reorient um, yourself your your priorities um, and so that you can come back into the world uh, with a refreshed respect perspective and perhaps knowing what you need to do or how to address certain things. But you may have to be confrontational about um, certain people or just certain situations in your life and just kind of take the reins on that. So those are kind of some initial things that I um, was picking out when I was um, studying the, the ENFJ uh, loop. And so ENFJs, please fill in the gaps. That's just kind of a starter, um, and I love to learn more from you guys, and and also just for everyone else that comes to listen, also be able to learn from y'all. And also, don't forget these books. Um, I'd really oh, and also these are proofs. So there's not going to be this uh, middle line right here. Not that that really matters, but um, that'd be awesome if you can support me that way. And hopefully, it is also a beneficial thing to you. They're all just unique questions. Um, they don't build off of each other per se. One, two, three is just, hey, you have different options for different um, questions and whatnot. So I will peace out and I'll see you in another video, another life. You never know. <laughs>